Hi, I'm Alex Satmarie. I'm a mechanical engineer at Hexagon, and I help students and professors put our simulation software to work. In this video, I'm going to show you how to model a beam in bending. We'll calculate the bending stress and also the transverse shear stress. First, let me describe what we're about to model. We're dealing with a beam. It's a cantilever. It has a fixed rigid support at the left-hand side and a load of 40,000 newtons being applied on the right. It has a cross-sectional area of 5 by 5 centimeters and a length of 25 centimeters. We'll deal with meters as our units in the tutorial. The beam is steel. It has a modulus of elasticity of 205 gigapascals, but we're going to use a Poisson's ratio of zero for reasons that I'll describe later. First, let's save the model file in a reasonable place. We'll go to File, Save As, and then navigate to a good place on my file system. Now I'll enter a file name and I'll do rectangular beam and then my initials. Next, let's create the geometry. We'll go to Geometry Primitives, click Box, and enter a length of 0.25, a height of 0.05, and a depth of 0.05. So that'll give it a square cross section. And we'll put it at the origin, 0, 0, 0. What we see here in gray is a preview of our box. And if I hit the green check mark, it gets created. I'll now exit this menu. Let's get the box so that it's basically oriented with it uh, pointing left and right. You can do that by clicking on the letter Z. So now we're looking at the Z axis end on. I right click on the blue Z axis, not the letter Z this time, and that rotates. I'll click with the left and right mouse buttons to make the part fill my view. And I click and drag with the middle mouse button, enabling me to see the right end of the part. Let's actually look at the left end. Great. Now we'll mesh the part. We'll go to meshing, hex meshing. Let's use a mesh size of 0.01 and quadratic elements. And we'll click on the part. Now we'll apply a constraint. This will be like a cantilever support. So I move my mouse over loads and boundary condition tools and click on displacement constraints. I'll click spherical and I click on the left end of this uh, beam. So that's applied. Now we'll apply a force to the right hand side of the beam. We'll click on loads and boundary conditions. We could do force moment, but traction load will give us something closer to what we would expect. I'll make sure that my load type is set to total load. The other one is more like a pressure. And I'll click total FY. The value that I'll want to have is minus 40,000, minus 4E4. I need to be able to select the right hand side of this beam. I'll click and drag with the middle mouse button and then click and drag holding the shift key this time. So shift and middle button to drag to slide it. And now it can reach the right hand side of this beam. So the force has now been applied. Now let's apply material properties. I'll click on materials, create material, and we'll do steel. I'm going to do something a little tricky. Um, the elastic modulus is going to be what we would normally use for steel, 205 E9 or 205 gigapascals. What's different is I'm going to use a Poisson's ratio of zero. Um, this lets us better match with what we would get from textbook formulas, and it makes setting the finite element model a little bit easier to get right so that it looks reasonable. Um, you could model a beam using a Poisson's ratio that is realistic, um, but doing that would take just a little bit more skill. Now we'll create 3D element properties to apply these material properties to the part itself. So I click on 3D element property, create 3D element property, and I'll enter steel 3D. And I'll select steel as my material. I'll click Assign 3D Element Property, and I'll click on the part. Now I'm ready to create the simulation. I'll right-click on the part and click Place an Analysis Scene. And now I'll click on the yellow runner. The 
The simulation completed successfully. I can see that here. Now we'll go to post-processing. I'll turn on fringe so that I can see what the stress is in the part. I'll also click on the letter Z and then right click on the Z axis to get things oriented in a way that's a little more useful. I can see that the part has stretched down. Now this deformation is more than what is realistic. I can click on this tab. If I were to do true scaling, we could see some deformation, but it's a little hard to observe. Um, so we can turn relative scaling back on, and that at least gives us the feel that this whole thing is bending down. Um, next, let's take a, another look at stress. So I'll move this box over here and I can hit expand. Von Mises stress is an abstract quantity. If we really want to understand bending stress, we'll want to look at what is the 1D stress going in the X direction. So that X component will give us the bending stress. And we see that there's not a lot of bending stress here. And then there's a whole lot over here, but then there's also a whole lot over here. Remember, when we're looking at a color bar, it's not that blue means zero or very small. Blue means, in this case, most negative. Um, but you see that the blue value and the red value are equal in magnitude. Um, that just means that we have compressive stress here, tensile stress here. Next, let's look at the transverse shear stress. That's going to be the XY component. And here, uh, the magnitude that we have is minus 25 E7. Let's convert this to megapascals. This magnitude is minus 25 here, and the red value is plus 2.3. So the red value is larger in value, but not in magnitude. The blue value is negative, but it's much, much larger in magnitude. This red value here being not zero is basically a modeling artifact. We can rotate our view and see the tail end of the beam and see that the stress is maximized in magnitude at blue all along that midplane. While we're here, let's take a look at the deflections. I'll click Quantity, Displacements Translational, and I see that I've got a deflection at the tip of about two millimeters there. That would be two millimeters. Now let's go back to uh, modify the model and we'll see what happens if instead of having a full beam, we're just applying this load to a cube. So I'll click exit to leave post-processing and then we'll modify the model. I'll click model in this browser to be able to come back to the model. I'll click on this triangle here to reveal the box that makes up the geometry for this part. And I'll double click on this box. And now I'll change the length from 0.25 to 0.05 so it matches the cross section dimension. And I'll click the green check mark for apply. You see that the force that was applied to the part has also slid over, so that makes this um, really just one change to make to be able to adjust that geometry and see what effect that has on our results. I'm going to run the simulation again. The simulation was successful. Now we'll click on post processing. I can click the left and my right mouse buttons to zoom this a little better. Okay. So what we see has some qualitative similarities to what we had seen before, but let's see what the magnitudes look like. Of course, the magnitude of the bending moment will be different because the length of the beam is much shorter. I'm going to change my derivations to X component again. And uh, I can change units to megapascals. That'll make it easier to interpret. So there's my bending stress and I click XY component again to be able to see the transverse shear stress. And it's worth thinking about how does the transverse shear stress compare to the magnitude of the bending stress for a short uh, cube versus for you know, a longer beam. We just modeled a beam in bending using finite element analysis with MSC Apex. Check the description for information on how to download our software for free or how to get in touch with us. 
please leave questions in the comments. You can get in touch with me on LinkedIn. And if you're a professor who teaches solid mechanics, um, you should definitely reach out so that we can get you instructor resources that will help you use finite element analysis to teach that subject. All right, have a great day.